thank you for joining in on another OTKN online class. My name is Sensei Stefan van der Merve. Tonight's class is going to be on WKF Kumite. Uh, for those of you that might not know what WKF is, WKF is the World Karate Federation. It is um, the International Board for Sports Karate. Um, we are supposed to be going to the Olympics this year. Obviously, as everybody knows, the Olympics have been postponed. So unfortunately, we won't be able to see karate on the Olympic stage just yet, but hopefully next year we'll see it. Um, so today's class is going to be focused around those of you that are already involved or interested in WKF and those of you that might want to get involved. Um, I'm also going to draw a few comparisons between WKF uh, Kumite and how you could use it in a traditional real-life self-defense situation as we go along. Um, so yeah, please make sure to like this video, um, follow our page if you haven't already, and then yes, uh, sorry, before we continue, I just wanted to say um, we sent out a message for our students earlier today, for those of you tuning in now, um, we let everybody know for tonight's class you're going to need a little bit of a target dummy, it's not necessary, but it is advisable, so to start today, I'm going to show everybody how to make a target dummy at home, so we told everybody what you need is a chair, an old mop or a broom, an empty plastic bottle and some duct tape. So before we continue with the warm up and the rest of the class, we're just going to take you guys through how to build your own home target dummy. And then I challenge each and every, every one of you guys, take a picture of your dummy when you're done, share it on our Facebook page, share it on the WhatsApp groups, we'll share it online as well. And um, let's just see what everybody's up to. Let's all get involved and make the best out of the situation. So, as you can see here, the dummy that I'll use today is just a chisi from the dojo, a little bit of PVC piping, and an old pool noodle that we cut a piece off, attached it to the top. But now I'm going to show you how to make your own, a little bit less fancy than this one. Just give me a second. Okay, so like I said, all you need to make your own training dummy at home is a chair, an old mop or a broom, a plastic bottle and some tape. I've just got some duct tape here. So what we're going to do, you take your chair, you've got to find a way to just balance or hold your broom. Just check that the height is maybe your own height. If you want to go a little bit higher, we're going to do some punches and some kicks. So ideally you want your dummy to be around about the same height as you. And then we're just going to take a little bit of this duct tape over here. Just gonna do a quick one. Obviously, you can take some time with yours at home, make it nice. But for today, we're just gonna tape the mop or the broom to your chair. And you take your empty plastic bottle and you're gonna stick it on top. That is your target. Nice thing about this is you make it, you can adjust it, you can add little pieces if you want to add different targets, you can put little marker marks on it so you know where to attack. And then, for example, you're going to just use it, practice your kicks, practice your punches, and we'll use a different dummy for today, but I challenge you, go make your own target dummy at home, send us a picture, and let's see what you guys come up with. Okay, sorry, just every time I bounce, 
Some legs swing sideways, left leg first. One, two, really try to open up those hips. We're gonna do some kicks, so you're gonna be warmed up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, guys. Shikurachi. Stretch, keep your back straight. Open up knees, open up the hips. Hands on the knees, twist, lifting up your back. Other way. Turn to your side, stretch your quads, keep the upper body straight. Flat and you're stretching your calf muscles. And sideways. And up. Touch your toes. Now we go the other way. Take your back leg, upper body straight. Back to flat, stretch your path. Okay, guys, really try to turn your hips forward here. Make sure you feel the stretch in your calf muscles. And we're going to go down. Keep your back straight. And stretch all the way down. Both legs straight, touch the floor. And up, swing the arms loose. Backwards. Rolling punches. Other way, side view for those of you that haven't done this before. So we're sitting up the arms, shake the hands loose. Just gonna loosen up the neck a little bit. Hands on the hips, tilt your head sideways. One, two, three, four, five, six. Turn to the side. One, two, three, four, Five, six, look to the floor, up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, light warm up, your heart rate should be a little bit up now, it's quite hot here in Namibia, so hopefully you guys are sweating. Now for the next part, hopefully you're wearing a V and a belt, if you are, please take off your belt. If you don't have your belt, it's fine. Maybe just make a line on the floor using some tape or a piece of string. Otherwise, just imagine a line. I'll show you guys why just now. So we're just going to lay the belt out down. I'm going to lay mine diagonal so that you guys can see. Move it back a little bit, getting frame. Okay, so roughly straight line with your belt. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of conditioning. WKF Kumite, very explosive very fast. The main point of it is to execute your technique with intensity, vigorousness, full speed, full power, but with perfect control by not making deadly contact with your opponent. Okay? So if you've never seen it, go watch some videos on YouTube. It's really, really impressive the speed that these guys move at. And to move at that kind of speed, to have that kind of power, we need to train explosive power. So. Today's workout is going to be four little exercises, training explosive power, a little bit of heart rate training as well. To start, we're going to do, let me just explain, sorry, we're going to do three rounds. We're going to go through, through the first round slowly, and then we're going to push the last two rounds at a nice high intensity, okay? So the first exercise in the set, we're going to do an explosive clap push-up. We're going to try to do ten of these. For those of you that have never done them before, this is what it looks like. 
We're going to do it nice and easy today. You're going to start flat on the floor again. From here, you're going to press all the way up. Clap your hands and touch the floor, okay? For those of you that might not be as confident in your ability to push up as hard, keeping your body tight is the most important thing, sorry. We're going to show you a variation. So you can just do it on your knees, like this. Keep your feet in the air. And then from here, push up hard, clap your hands and go back, okay? So we're going to try 10, nice and slow, together, and then I'll show you the next exercise. Everybody ready? Let's go. Start flat, on my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Everybody up. Explosive push-ups. Next one, we're going to do some squat jumps, training the explosive power in the legs. So from here, squat position, feet shoulder width. We're going to keep the arms in front, go down into your squat, jump up, and land again, okay? If you have knee problems, maybe be careful with this one. Just do some normal squats or some squat kicks. The rest of us, we're going to do 10. Okay, let's go together. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten explosive squats. I'm just looking at the time, guys. To keep this video a little bit short, I think we're only going to do two rounds. So I'm going to explain the first one, we're going to do one more, nice and fast together, and then you guys can go do more at home, okay? Last exercise, before we use the belt, you're just going to be flat on your back, arms open, on my car, come up, touch your toe with your opposite hand, so left leg, right hand, knees in the middle, make sure you lift your shoulders, we're going to do 10, changing legs each time, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and up. Okay, so our jack knives is a third exercise. So from the beginning, explosive push ups, explosive squats, jack knives, and now the belt. So we're going to start both feet behind the belt. In a basic fighting position, and then all we're going to do is we're going to do a typewriter bounce. So from here, cross your belt and back. The back foot's going to stay, and you're just going to go across. One, two, three, and we're going to do 20, change legs, 20 on the other side. For those of you that are a little bit more advanced, want to challenge yourself, start on the one side of your belt. You're going to go over one. Bad example, let's start again. Start this side, go over one. Two, three, four, five, shuffling sideways as you go, and then you're gonna go back all the way. So for those of you that want to try that advanced shuffle, we go ten that way, ten back. The rest of us, we're just gonna do the normal shuffle, twenty times, change legs twenty, and we're gonna do one more set of the circuit. See, this is already taking a little bit longer than expected, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. Please leave a like, give us a heart, leave a comment. Let's go do a set now with this. Start by the line, keep your hands up at all times. And we're going to go across. One, two, three, four. Keep your eyes up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good stuff. Let's change legs, other leg in front. Another 20. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Okay, so that's our circuit. I'm gonna do one more round with you guys. No breaks. We're gonna push the tempo, and then you guys can go do another one at home. Maybe after the workout is done, or tomorrow. It's up to you, that's why we make these videos. So, 10 explosive push-ups, explosive squats, 
10 jack knives, 20 of each leg. Let's go from the beginning. Everybody ready? On my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up, squat jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On your back. Flat out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up. Keep the tempo. Type right in. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Change legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I hope you're a little bit out of breath. I am. Maybe it's because it's hot in the dojo. Maybe I'm unfit. Who knows? That is our conditioning circuit, guys. Very easy, simple techniques. High repetitions, not actually even. Just a high tempo, okay? Keep your heart rate up. Rest in between. And you do the circuit again. So let's quickly tie our belts. For those of you that have your mitts, your mouth guard, shin pads, all that stuff nearby, get it out, put it on. I'm gonna give you one minute just to catch your breath, get your dummy out, and then we're gonna go through some basic WKF Kumite techniques. Okay? Take a break. As I said, guys, if you're enjoying this, please leave us a like, follow our page. We try to do a lot of effort to keep it updated. We share a lot of content from international IOGKF instructors, other international IOGKF goes through pages, WKF pages. We try to share a lot of content on there. So go have a look, keep yourself busy, go through our online classes, go through them multiple times with your board, keep up to date, okay? We're doing this stuff for you, so please leave a like, leave a comment, leave a review. We really appreciate it. Okay, so hopefully you have your training dummy out. For today, we're going to be using this one here. Get your mitts on. I'm just going to put on my mitts for now. If you've got the rest of your gear here, that's great. Put it on. Okay, so as I mentioned, WKF Kumite. It's about speed, it's about power, vigorousness, effective techniques, but controlled. Okay, so the way this can be transferred or useful in a real life self defense situation is the ability to generate that speed, generate that power. It doesn't help that you're really strong, but your punches are super slow, okay? You need to be able to generate speed, generate power really quickly off the bat, okay? So for those of you that know WKF, the first technique that we're going to do is a Kizame Zuke, front hand punch. So just start in front of your training dummy. Make sure that you're in range, extend your front hand, make sure you can just touch it. This is about control, like I said, okay? I don't want you to come and knock your training dummy over, okay? Control it, just touch it, and back. We're going to start with Kizamizuki, and we're going to work the distance back, and I'm going to show you how you would use this in a self-defense situation, okay? So, starting close to your dummy, keep your hands up. On my count, we're just going to do 10. You can obviously go back and do more, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to speed through the things a little bit. So, nice and close, hands up. Kizami Zuki, extend, work the pullback, and back. Okay, we're not focusing too much on the feet right now. You can use your hips to generate a little bit of power, but for now, just work on your distancing and your control. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so your target dummy, your height, plus minus maybe face punch or chest punch. You can play around, 
you can try both, okay? But that was really close. So you're basically standing within punching distance of your opponent. For the next one, I'm gonna take one step backwards. So from here, I don't want you to touch the dummy, okay? You're gonna have to move your front foot just a little bit forward into a full long stance. Fighting stance is generally a hunting kutsudachi, half a long stance, okay? So that you can move easier. Same kutsudachi, very strong, very powerful, but it makes it difficult to move, difficult to rotate around the ring quickly. Okay, so we're going to be in a hunting foot to that you start, and from here, we're going to step forward, the front foot to a basic second foot to that you, his arm is okay, touch the dummy, and come back, okay? Ten times, let's go, make sure you can't touch it from here, you got to go in, touch it, and come back, okay, let's go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Okay, so that's increasing your distance. Now, we're going to take it even further back. Okay, so now, the out of range, we take it to that chin. This is generally plus minus for your WK fight spot. At this range here, safe away from your opponent. And in a self defense situation, depending, you're also going to have a little bit of distance between you and your opponent. So we're going to do 10 times. What I want from you now is almost a lunge technique. So we're going to generate power from the legs, shooting forward, Kizami Zuki, and then you're going to land in hunting Kutsudachi close to your opponent. For now, we're not going to work on the breakaway, it's a little bit more advanced, a little bit of a later focus. For now, I want you to cover that distance with speed, accuracy, and power, vigorousness, okay? Make it count. Imagine you are trying to attack your opponent from far. Maybe he's got a knife or something, you've got to cover that distance quickly. We'll show you why you would do that just now. For now, nice, nice distance between you and your dummy. Keep your hands up, relax, bounce. Oh my god, explode forward. Kizami is okay. Touch your dummy and relax. One, and back. And two, and back. Okay, so the point here is to cover the distance, get close. When you're in here, when you're close, you can sweep, you can ura. There's a lot of techniques, other situations you can do. For now, I just want you to get in, okay? Don't worry about it, just don't let your dummy hit you in the face. Let's go, eight more. One, and back. Relax, keep your hands up, two, and back. Three, and back. Four, and back. Back six and back seven and back. Last one eight. Okay, good. So, I think for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna do one side. So, if you're going through this at home, pause it here, do the other side. Starting close, he's out of Zuki, slide into back, moving into the glutes, and a little bit further back. With the lunge, okay? Practice each side. Try to be ambidextrous, okay? Being able to attack with both arms. How you would use this in a real life situation? Someone is trying to attack you, or threatening you, asking you for your phone or your wallet. Obviously you're taking it back maybe. Got a little bit of distance between you and your opponent. If you want to attack him, he's obviously ready to do something. So you need to cover this distance. Get in there quickly. So say, you're trying to be, be unarmed, you say you're reaching for your phone, I don't know where it is, from here, explode, boom, hit your opponent. In a real life, you're not going to pull back, you're not going to control it, you're going to explode, punch straight through him, hopefully end the fight in one technique, okay? So the same principles of WKF, speed, power, accuracy, it's all going to apply in a real life situation, if you're just not going to hold back. In a ring, we bowed, we've agreed to fight each other. You're going to control it. You have to control it. Refs are going to penalize you. In a real life situation, there's no control. You explode off the bat. You finish the fight. One technique, okay? So that is how I want you guys to transfer this into your real life training, to your real life self-defense. Those of you that might not be interested in wearing the mitts and the pads and all that kind of stuff, you can still use these principles. Train it in the same way. It's going to help your karate in the long run, okay? Enough talking. We're going to go into Gai Kizuki. See, we're running out of time. 
Okay, we're going to try to keep this video to about 40 minutes or so. So we'll see. From here, Gai Kazuki. We're going to start nice and close. Gai Kazuki is generally you're going to punch lower. You're going to punch towards the body, okay? Because it's a nice fast punch using the rotation of your hip, okay? So in Hanzen Kutsudachi, we're going to stand nice and close. On my card, punch on your back end. For now, don't worry about the stance, okay? Generate speed, get the punch in before the opponent can punch you. So, use your hips, turn. If you want to lift up on your foot, you can. If you're wearing pads, you might want to tilt your foot. There is a slide pad on the foot for sweeps and sliding on the floor. That's what that shiny side is for, okay? So, different style. For those of you that are focused on traditional, don't take all of this, focus on your traditional stances. This is simply to try to generate speed. Generate power quickly, okay? Different aspect of karate. So, nice and close. Guy Kazuki from here on my count, 10 times. One, two, three, four, five. Always back to combine. Keeping your hands up, ready for the next one. Six, seven, eight. Two more. Nine, ten. Okay, it's Guy Kazuki, nice and close. So imagine. You've now done your Kisame Kazuki. Boom! You're close to your opponent. Three. Boom! Guy Kazuki again, okay? So that was the application of a close Guy Kazuki. Next one, we're going to go a little bit further away again. Can't reach with a normal one. Step into Guy uh, Slight reach. So now you're practicing reach. Look at my body, guys. From here, when I punch, twist your body. Make sure your eyes are always facing forward. Looking at your opponent. Punch is on target. Use that rotation, bring it back, okay? Very important. Twist your body, generate speed. Same applies to normal karate. Ura Ken, normal guy Kazuki. Those techniques. Take down, Iksarichi. Using your hips, generate power, okay? Elbow strikes, it's all in there. Same rules apply. So now, a little bit further away, guy Kazuki. On my count, go in, punch, and back. Ten times. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, mix it up if you're at home. Body, face, body, face. Okay, that's why you've made a dummy. So you can practice your target. Target practicing, accuracy. Okay, last one. Also, only going to do ten. Guy Kazuki application from even further away. So for today, we're going to try to combine it with the basic combo that everybody does, everybody knows, Kizami Zuki, Gai Kazuki. Okay, because most people aren't going to let you cover this distance and punch them, okay? It's not as fast as a Kizami Zuki. So you want to set up your Gai Kazuki with the front hand. So we're going to be close, uh, a little bit further away I mean. From here, you're going to do Kizami Zuki to get in a little bit closer. Turn, Gai Kazuki. Get your punch in on target, get your hands up, okay? You have a lot of time now. Go practice. Practice your distance over and over and over again. You might not get it right now. You might be too close. You might be too far. You can't reach. So play around. Challenge yourself, okay? Working your way backwards. Further with the technique. More explosiveness as you get stronger. Ten times. Hands up. Kizami Zuki, Gai Kizuki. Combination. Let's go. One, two, four. Kizami Gaika. Two. Hands up. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one. Ten. Okay. Work your distance, guys. Work your technique. Make sure it's accurate, on point, speed, power, every single time. Okay, basic punches, Zami Zuki, Gai Kazuki. Now, there's hundreds of different combinations you can do using these techniques. Just to give you a few, we'll go into more detail with them next time, do more repetition. Just to give you an idea, you can go Gai Kazuki from far, Gai Kazuki step, Gai Kazuki, okay? Adding a step. Transition in between. You can do Gai Kazuki, step Gai Kazuki again. Or if you're close, Gai Kazuki low, Gai Kazuki high. Okay? It's a 
sizes of different combinations you can do. And we're just doing one side for now. Obviously, hopefully you're doing both. But imagine having the same combinations both sides. All of a sudden, you've doubled the amount of techniques you can do. You've doubled the amount of techniques your opponent needs to defend against. Okay, so now is your chance. If you know you can't kick with your left leg, go practice. Left leg kicks, left leg kicks. If you know your right hand, Gaikazuki, is slow, go practice. Gaikazuki, Gaikazuki, Gaikazuki. Over and over and over again. Okay? Um, quick story while I just catch my breath before we go into the kicks. Uh, with regards to the dummy, why I'm so passionate about making a dummy and having one at home. When I was younger, since a car helped me set up a dummy at home, all we did was take a broom that had broken, we stuck the sharp point into our lawn, we put a little coke bottle on top, and that was my dummy. And that is how I learned to do all my kicks. Mawashi Gary, Gura Mawashi Gary, spinning Gura Mawashi Gary, okay? Multiple kicks, low Mawashi, high Mawashi. That is how you practice these things, practicing your distancing, practicing your accuracy, okay? So make yourself one of these. If you have a punch bag at home, use it. Don't just let it stand there as a close wrap. Use the things, okay? That is your best chance to practice. You're not going to get time to perfect your techniques in the dojo. If you ever want to become a specialist in a technique, you need to put in extra time. You need to put in extra effort. You need to decide what you're good at. And you need to sharpen it so that regardless of the opponent, regardless of the situation, the technique is going to work, okay? That is how confident you have to be in what you can do. Okay, enough talk. Quickly going to go over Mawashi Gary and then Ura Mawashi Gary, okay? Just nice and quick. We're just going to do with the one leg for now. So to start with Mawashi Gary, we're going to do front foot, okay? Let's maybe move your dummy a little bit lower if you need to. From here, fighting stance, out of the range of punches, okay? If you're close enough to punch him, why kick? Then your kicks are going to be too close. So your kick is a different distance, okay? So from here, Mawashi Gary, front foot, just lift up your weight, back foot doesn't move, touch and back, touch and back. As you get more comfortable, more flexible, you move up your dummy, touch and back, touch and back, okay? Practice, 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 how oh, you get it right. We're going to do 10 times, nice and close, then we're going to do back foot mawashi, and then we're going to go into ura mawashi, okay? So you can practice as many of these as you want to, we're just going to do 10. Oh my god, from here, hands up, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, nice and easy. Now we're gonna try back foot, same distance. For now, turn, back foot, kick, back foot, back, okay? Back foot wash, very, very strong technique, okay? You can break ribs. Come in under your opponent's guard. Very, very powerful technique, okay? Real life or sports karate. It has to be one in your arsenal. You have to practice this, okay? So, from here, for this reason now, we're just going to practice control, so don't smash your dummy over. But from here, back foot, one, boom, and bring it back if possible. Try not to have to rotate through, okay? And you're leaving your back vulnerable. If you put too much momentum into that kick and your opponent moves away, your defense is over here and all of a sudden open to different attacks, okay? So try to control it, kick, boom, bring it back, okay? You're going to go slowly, as you get comfortable you can speed it up. As you progress with this kick, for now I just want you to focus on the kick, but as you progress, kick, boom, punch afterwards. Always try to follow up the technique in case you might have missed. Or your opponent might have blocked it. Okay? But for now, just more wash again. Work the speed, work the control. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So regarding your hands, you do not necessarily want to be here. Okay? Very open to a counter technique. Try to keep your hands up or in some way defend your body, okay? Don't leave yourself open. We're not birds, we're not flying. Get the kick in, boom, get back, okay? Go practice that, add more speed. We don't have time for that now. So we're just gonna go into reverse Mawashi Gary. My personal favorite technique, okay? 
This technique is great because it's very, very difficult to block and it's very versatile. Okay? A Mawashi game, specifically regarding WKF criteria, needs you to have full extension of the leg on scoring. Okay? Which means if I'm too close to my opponent and I kick and my leg is still bent, Mawashi Gary won't score. Okay? Ura Mawashi is different. You can score it from multiple distances because the technique allows for it. So from a further distance, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. From a slightly further distance, you can lift up, kick, practically full extension of the leg. But you can score your Ura Mawashi from very close as well. Because of the bend in the kick and because of the tilt of your body, you can score from very close. Maybe you've grappled with your opponent, tilt back, you can still score Ura Mawashi. Still scoring criteria, okay? Doesn't need that full extension. So, we're gonna go slowly for the first few, just in fighting stance. Make sure that you're in reach. We're gonna break it down for the first three or four reps. We're gonna speed it up. From here, when you kick, you're gonna go up with your leg. This is step one. Two, you're gonna turn your hips, turn your foot on the floor. Very, very important. Step three, extend your foot, bringing it back to touch your dummy. Step four, putting your foot back down. Quite a technical kick, but like I said, you have time. Practice it. We're gonna go slowly. One, up, two, turn, three, kick, four, put your foot down. One more time. One, up, two, turn, three, kick, four, put down. Now we're gonna do it in one movement, say only eight times. Then we're gonna do back leg, and then I've got a little challenge for you, and then we'll end off with some stretches. Okay? So from here, one count. One, two, three. So I go a little bit slower for those of you that might not see. Four.
six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. Okay, something to leave you guys with, something for you to practice. Like I said, that's the nice thing about making yourself a dummy. You can adjust it, you can add different pads, different targets, work different heights, work different peak combinations. Okay, anything you want to do. You need a target though. It doesn't help you spinning around in the air, thinking you're amazing. And then when you have to fight an opponent, he just moves backwards and you can't hit him. Okay? So work your accuracy, work your distance, know what you can do. And most importantly, know how you can transfer these skills into your self-defense, into your traditional karate. Okay? Because although it's a different aspect completely, sports karate can still be useful for your normal karate training. Fitness, explosive power, speed, accuracy. Just try these things at home. Give it a go. We're not expecting you to go fight in a ring, to go to Premier League, okay? Just open your horizons to all different aspects of karate, okay? Sports karate is one of them. It's just as hojo undo or kata or any of those other aspects are, okay? There's a time and a place for everything. So, for now, we're just gonna Take our mitts off, move your dummy out of the way. We're going to do two or three, two or three stretches, and then we're going to end off, okay? So everybody just nice and low, flat, stretch out both legs for now, touch the toes, keep your back straight, make sure you feel the stretch, focus on your breathing, okay? And guys, like I said, please go. Make your own target dummies at home. Send us a picture on our Facebook page or over WhatsApp. We'll share it on the Facebook page. Yeah, so we can share it by next week maybe. And um, yeah, please keep us up to date with your training. We really appreciate your videos, the effort you guys are making. Um, guys are putting on keys to train at home. These things really mean a lot to us, guys. We need to stand together now as an OGK and family. And although we can't come in and train and sweat together, there's no reason we can't make the best out of the situation and still get our hearts beating a little bit faster, break a sweat, and work on our karate, okay? So just change up. We did this stretch on Monday's class for the glutes. Whenever you're doing your stretching, Try to hold your stretches for about 20 seconds, 30 seconds or so. Relax a little bit and then give it another go. See if you can go further. Next one, just stretch out your arms in front of you. Keep your back straight. Pull backwards, sit down into your ankles. And then just lean through, arching your back. share, comment, send us a picture, um, we really appreciate it, tune in next week, we'll be sharing our class schedule um, over the weekend, Monday through Thursday, 6pm Namibian time, on Facebook live, hopefully we can still use the dojo, we're going to see how we can do it, otherwise the instructors will be streaming from home, okay, so please make sure you guys sign in, putting in a lot of effort here for you guys, so we hope you appreciate it, we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are, and yes, Finally, let's just stick together as an OGKN family, as an OGKN community, and make the best of the situation. Please stay safe, keep your family safe during the time of quarantine. Let's all abide to the rules, stay at home, make sure you wash your hands regularly, and everybody's known the rules, or everybody knows the guidelines by now. Let's please stick together, do your best, it's part of discipline, it's one of our aspects, one of our dojo kun criteria is discipline and respect, okay? So let's respect the laws, let's respect the guidelines, let's all work together during this time and hopefully within 14 days, 17 days, not exactly sure, we'll be back in the dojo again. Alright, Kyotsuke, Rei, Arigai Goshimasta, thank you guys very much, we'll see you next week. Arigato!